you don't have to have your dogs play and be crazy together all the time. Being able to coexist peacefully um, in a controlled environment uh, is really nice instead of constant chaos when you have more than one dog. Hey guys, Kat here from Standing Stone Kennels and I've got our newest member of the family, Ariel. She is from Flight Level Kennels and her registered name is Flight Level's Gunnin' for Trouble. Uh, it's kind of a fun little name. Ariel like an Ariel gunner, not Ariel like the Little Mermaid. She has um, just turned eight weeks old and we wanna show you the process of introducing her to our other dogs. Um, we have quite a few so it's important that we just don't throw her to the wolves um, and we make sure that the interactions are controlled um, and that we can make sure that her behavior and our adult dog's behavior is appropriate. So today we are going to introduce her to a young dog, Hex. He is just over a year old and still kind of a puppy himself. He has a great personality, loves um, all dogs, all people. And then we're also going to introduce her to our old sugar face senior dog, Nix. He's almost 12 and though he's been raised with lots of puppies over the years he is getting you know old and set in his ways and maybe isn't as big a fan of puppies anymore so I want to show you the difference between those introductions I want to show you the difference in um, the dog body language and draw attention to that so to set this up I'm not just going to set her down and let her go meet her friend I'm going to actually put a little leash, long leash on her, so I have more control over her so she can't just romp all over the place or go immediately jump on uh, Hex and maybe startle him or be too rough with him right away. As well as I'm having Hex just hanging out on a dog bed, he's not actually being asked to stay there. He's just relaxing there. So if he wants to come meet her, he can. If he wants to leave the area and not interact with her, he can also do that as well. I'm also not having anything out like bones or treats or toys, anything that's a super high value resource that could be guarded or um, create any uh, tension over, shall we say. So let me go ahead and get her long leash on and then we will get her introduced to Hex. Okay, so I've got my <laughs> long leash on. I think Hex says he wants to say hi. So before I actually even set her on the ground, they can sniff each other a little bit. Yeah, we got a big tail wag. Look at that personality out of Hex. We got a little puppy tail wag out of Ariel. Uh, this is really great initial introduction. So he, like I said, he doesn't have to be on his dog bed. He can come off of his dog bed. You know, he is excited, but he's not necessarily 100%. See his ears pinning back a little bit? Um, that's why I'm holding her back so she can't necessarily just jump on him right away. But did you see that play bow? That was an introduce, um, an invitation to come engage with me, come play with me. So it's really important to be able to read body language on dogs uh, because that's the number one thing that can lead to a potential dog fight or the puppy playing too rough with the older dog, the older dog thinking that they need to put the puppy in its place because we need to be advocating for both of them and reading the situation. So if she's starting to get too playful with him, I would just pull her back a little bit based on his body language. If he's getting too rough with her, I would also maybe scoop her up so that he doesn't accidentally hurt her. But he's being super gentle. They're playing very nicely. This is a great first introduction for these guys. But I will say, I always want my introductions to continue being supervised and their playtime being supervised because she's itty bitty, he's bigger. And even though they're having fun and playing together and like each other, he could accidentally play too rough with her and she could get hurt. And then that could create some potential hesitation on her part of meeting new dogs and interacting with dogs. So we wanna maintain this supervised play um, and make sure that it continues to be as positive as it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and scoop her up before this escalates too much further <laughs> and then I'm gonna have her meet our older senior dog Nix. Okay so now Ariel gets to meet Nix. Like I said he's our old sugar face senior dog around here. He is almost 12. He's met puppies before but we're gonna start that process. His body language you can see is a lot different already than Hex. Hex was excited, tail wagging, standing up, more engaged. Nix is a little bit like meh I don't know about this. 
So I'm gonna just bring her down on his level to sniff a little bit. Yeah, a little bit of sniffing. She thinks she's all about introducing herself to him, but he's still not 100% sure. You know, he's not coming off of his dog bed to meet her. So we're gonna, like I said, interact slowly, keeping her back so that she can't necessarily just pounce on him right away. So because he's not really engaging like Hex was, she's already a little bit disinterested in him, which is fine. You don't have to have your dogs play and be crazy together all the time. Being able to coexist peacefully um, in a controlled environment uh, is really nice instead of constant chaos when you have more than one dog. So let's see if there's any other interaction. You know, she's trying to chew on him right away, his collar. He can absolutely leave the situation if he wants to because he's not expected to stay there, but he's interested in sniffing her. His tail, I don't think you can see it, is wagging a little bit. She's trying to climb on him, so I'm gonna actually say, hey, I don't know if he's ready for that, but he's doing some play pawing with her, <sighs> wanting to mouth on her a little bit, very accepting of her already. Sniffing a little bit more. Again, she's already, you know, a little less interested in engaging with him because he is not inviting as much play as what Hex was doing. So she's, if you will, reading the dog's body language and reading the room and understanding that he's not as inviting to play as what Hex was. And she's already accepting that and reacting to that environment. So or in, reacting to that body language of his which is good. His tail is still wagging. It's not as up and as excited, but he is still having a positive engagement with her for sure. Um, this became the toy now because she's a puppy looking for something to play with. Even though I said, don't utilize toys, she's found a way to create her own toy in this situation. So the fact that they're not engaging completely is perfectly fine. And we're gonna just keep allowing these small pieces of engagement and allowing her to engage with him and him to engage with her kind of on their own pace. We're not gonna push it, we're not gonna force it, we're not gonna say, well, you need to be able to play with your new puppy friend immediately. It can take time uh, and it may never become to the point where he wants to play with her all the time or often. So I'm gonna go ahead and scoop her back up Good boy, Nixer. What a good old man. And we will continue to monitor their interactions, let them play together, supervise, um, and let you know how her development goes because we're also going to show you how we introduce puppies to our children because that is even more chaos than introducing puppies to dogs. <laughs>